welcome back to OC Avery. Now today, the point of this video is I'm going to be answering the question, can a new species be created and how can you create a new species? Now, in short, the answer is yes. Yes, a new species can be created uh, and the main way that, that is going to be made is by interbreeding uh, animals, in particular birds, for um, the viewers of my channel at least, um, and how we can breed different birds together to produce fertile hybrid offspring, uh, which then effectively make a new species. So the definition of a species is as follows. A group of organisms that can reproduce together to produce fertile offspring. Now, as we all know, especially in the bird world, this is not always the case. We can, for example, cross a canary with a red siskin and we get a red siskin mule. We can then put that mule back to a canary and make F2 hybrids. And then we can keep working that back together with canaries to eventually create what we now know today as the red factor uh, and diamorphic canaries. So we have the red factor canary, that is derived from the red siskin. We have the red diamorphic, that's derived from the red siskin. And then we have the yellow diamorphics, uh, which I believe may be bred um, originally from red siskins or could be from yellow siskins or some other type of diamorphic siskin species, whose um, cocks and hens you can tell and sex just visually. Um, now that is different, so for example, my red poles, they are not diamorphic, obviously. You can't tell the difference until the male colours up, but um, and that's in the second year. In first year, really, that's um, how you tell, because the males and females are visually different uh, and make a quite obvious uh, you know, difference between the two. Um, so how could you actually create a new species from that? Now, this is all based on chance with doing fertile hybrids. So as I mentioned, red siskins crossed with canaries can make fertile mules, um, which obviously half red siskin, half canary. You can breed that back to a canary and you can start to continue to breed that back to canaries uh, and obviously getting the red pigment through, which is how we got the red factor and um, all the other types of red based canary uh, and then really uh, the same goes if we wanted to make red siskins in different mutations you can cross it with a canary get the mule and you can pass that down into the red siskin line but that's for a different video so actually how can you make a new species so obviously the canary is a species as itself but we class red red uh, based canaries you know the red factors as the same as maybe a fife or even the same in the wild version, the Atlantic canary. Uh, so they are all the same species, but really are made through different fertile hybrids, uh, which is how we sort of come about to make the domestic canary as we know it today, which is unlike anything uh, that you see in the wild. Uh, obviously you don't get a yellow canary like this as the Atlantic canary, unless there's a one-off spontaneous mutation. Again, something for a different video. So. What other examples can I give you which are fertile hybrids, uh, which are actually now a new species? Now, what is probably one of the most successful species in the aviculture hobby, which many of you may know, is the Bengalese finch, also known as the society finch. So this bird originally came from a fertile hybrid, and that's how we come to know the new species as it is today. Now, these birds are not wild, they're completely domesticated and they cannot be found anywhere in the wild on earth uh, where they would natively stand because they are fertile hybrids, they were domesticated by humans and we made them into what they are now today. So where did that originally come from? Now there is speculation and a lot of people have different opinions on this uh, and I'm just giving you the information that I've read so please don't quote me on this but it is a domestication version of the white rumped munia I believe it's called and um, originally it is based on that bird but then after interbreeding it with maybe a, a red Indian silver bills uh, and there's also other types of munia it had been interbred with to the point where we've now got uh, these recognized as a new species which is now the Bengalese finch so they are completely domesticated you cannot observe them in the wild obviously if there's an escapee it's a bit of a, an anomaly rather than a, a wild actually wild Bengalese finch um, 
so there you are that is probably the best example obviously my example of the canary uh, and the red factor canary as well however you have to take into account with that is that this is not um sort of fertile hybrid to fertile hybrid together this is breeding them back with a a few one-off fertile hybrids and breeding them back to the the parent species so it's more just polluting blood there i guess you could say or changing it a bit to make it more desirable as we have got the red factor but the bengalese is a great example because you have a mix of all sorts of different um, species in there to create this one new species as we know it today. So how could you breed one? Now this would be based on uh, breeding different birds together and just getting lucky. I think that the main thing to remember here is luck uh, and you are going to need that when trying to actually breed hybrids to hybrids or mules to mules or even a mule to its its parent so for example i could pair uh, an offspring off of this pair so this is a goldfinch mule pair we've got the goldfinch cock with a canary hen now this pair hopefully this year should produce me several nice goldfinch mules and i could get one of those and pair it back to a canary now in the very off chance that that bird is fertile you would get f2 hybrids which would be uh, three quarter canary and a quarter goldfinch now if they continued to be fertile we could actually continue to breed them back to the canary to a point where we would end up with the canary but slight alterations and that might be for example a red mask or that might be black shoulders or that could be simple as a gold you know a yellow wing bar in the canary now this is something that i obviously haven't done and i don't believe anyone has done and um, and and that's really just breeding them back uh, there but really to create a new species you need to be rather than breeding it back to the parent species is putting them together so uh, if uh, the definition of a species they have to produce fertile offspring now for example if i was to then take uh, a goldfinch mule cock and pair it to a goldfinch mule hen pair them together and they bred successfully and made as offspring and we continue to breed them back together and then suddenly we have a group of goldfinch mules which actually are bred from two goldfinch mule parents rather than a goldfinch and a canary then that really would be a new species um in theory because we we've got fertile hybrids here we're pairing them back to each other and they're continually making fertile high um fertile offspring rather than the one-off fertile bird which you might get now some of the best examples i can think of with um these fertile hybrids which are at least in uh, recent memory is that a a siskin red pole hybrid was bred to a white canary this year and it just so happened to be fertile to actually make a a hybrid mule in a, a yeah, effectively so this bird would be half a canary a quarter red pole and a quarter siskin now that bird you could continue to breed back to canaries and you've got a bit of red pole blood in there and a bit of siskin blood uh, or you know you could just leave that and, and not breed it or you could try and breed it maybe back to a red pole or back to a siskin um that was a recent one this year i do know that mark pointing um bred sorry mark pointing has a greenfinch crossbill hybrid an f1 it turned out to be fertile i believe it was in 2019 it then bred or 2018 even it then bred with a greenfinch hen which produced a um a, an offspring there which was a three quarter of a greenfinch and a quarter crossbill now that really wouldn't be a new species it's just a hybrid again but if that bird then continually kept breeding these um offspring effectively and then start to breed these three quarter green finch and quarter crossbill hybrids with with the same again and putting them back together so then we have a line of completely just that then that really would be a new species so that's just another example of the one-off uh, fertile hybrid or fertile mule that has come out and actually managed to produce this obviously we've spoke about the uh, red factor and how that was derived in basically anyway and then uh, obviously the bengalese finch 
Now, I do have an example to show you of what I believe is a fertile red palm mule that I have here. So this is that bird right here. Now this is half a mealy red pole. So it was a mealy red pole cock to a Norwich canary hen. Um, he is, I've had him um, since 2019 winter uh, and he was an over year bird then. So I believe he's a 2018 bird. So he's coming to now three years old. Um, and that's one of the things with hybrids and mules actually is that over time they actually become more and more or there's a higher chance of them being fertile um, with age which is actually mainly red this red siski mules especially with those becoming fertile at around three years old so this is the bird and obviously I, I wouldn't make a bold claim like that um, without some sort of evidence. Uh, and the reason that I believe this bird might be fertile, it could end up that he isn't and there's nothing lost from that. But I will be trying him with a canary hen this year to see what happens. Um, but either way, uh, he paired up this when a, in the spring. This whole aviary was um, just a big flight. This was, this was an aviary rather than a bird shed like it is now. Uh, and he actually paired to the spare crossbill hen, which was in here. Um, the crossbill hen made a nest. She laid two eggs. Now, I just thought the only chance that these birds, these eggs will be fertile is if the, the greenfinch pair, which were in here, the greenfinch cock had treaded her, or potentially a five canary cock. Um, but it turns out he was very protective of her and actually hung around the nest the whole time. Um, the, the five canary had, had paired himself with a goldfinch mule hen uh, and the greenfinches had paired and were, weren't interested in mating with anything else at all other than raising their young and mating with each other. Um, which led it to only being this which had treaded the, um, or threaded the crossbill hen. And after 10 days, I thought, I'll check the eggs to see what's happening. And both eggs were full. Um, they were both full. Uh, the, the crossbill hen hadn't been in contact with a, a crossbill cock for three months. So there was no chance of a crossbill uh, you know, being pure crossbill. And sadly, those eggs didn't get to hatching. Um, we had a, a heat wave and sadly that the eggs, the eggs fried um, as the, the hen had not depth. The hen had nested in direct sunlight. So it was really unfortunate. Um, but we did have two full eggs and he fed her all the time. And he never left her side. So that's why I believe this could potentially be fertile, which is why I will be breeding it this year with a canary or there is the off chance that I might put him back to a red pole hen if we do have one spare. Um, so we'll have to see what happens, but it's something a little bit interesting to take into account and think of. I will be trying it this year with him. And then I have some other birds to show you which could potentially be fertile as well. So then I have these two mules which could potentially be fertile. Now these are European siskins um, crossed with satinet canaries and they are brother and sister. So I have the father who is, um, he's, he's paired to a nice siskin hen down in one of the lower cages. And then uh, sadly I did lose the mother as she went back for a second round. Um, but that is the pair. So we have the cock here and the hen here. Um, so siskins are quite closely related to the canary and I will talk about other birds that are very closely related uh, a little later on. But these are obviously quite closely related to the canary and um, with, with these being mules and because they're brother and sister, so are very, very, you know, as genetically close as possible. Um, we're, then I'm going to pair these two together in this year and use them as feeders. Um, but also she will lay eggs, she'll lay her own eggs. Um, so I am going to let them sit on a round or two of those and keep them underneath the, until I can swap them out with something else. It might be we, we, we foster some other canaries underneath them, we, pair, we foster siskins, red poles, maybe other mules or hybrids or something like that. Um, but I am going to pair these two together um, for the breeding season and just see what happens because there's nothing to lose from it. I've got the cage spare. So they'll go in there, they'll get a nest pan in there and I'll just leave them to it. Hopefully they will go down uh, and I can use them as feeders if they don't produce fertile eggs. But if they do, then we will be getting F2 siskin mules from those. Uh, so that is European siskin cross satinet canary hen, which produce these two. 
So as I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to tell you a few different birds that are quite closely related to the canary itself, uh, which then would have the highest chance of being fertile. That's not saying that others won't be fertile. For example, the red palm meal, which I showed you, um, could potentially be fertile, but I've been aware that I believe that FAO, um, the FAO um, mutation in red poles was actually derived from a red pole mule uh, but please don't quote me on that that's just something i've heard um so you know they can be fertile and obviously there is other mules and hybrids that have been known to be fertile which aren't as closely related and um, now the closest things related to the atlantic canary so the atlantic canary's genus is serinus so in that the serins um, are quite closely related. So we have the European serin, so they are probably most likely to be fertile with the uh, canary to produce fertile mules, which could then pretty much make its own species. Um, there's also things like the red fronted serin. Uh, there are a lot of other types of serin. So take it that a lot of serin species will most likely be fertile with um, these canaries but then also taking that the serines are very closely related to the siskins and the siskins are very closely related to canaries so then i think it would be safe to say that most siskin species and most serine species if bred with a canary have the highest chance of uh, being fertile and producing these fertile hybrids um obviously just make a note of highest chance that isn't saying that they will be but there's the, the you yeah, know the, the largest chance of that happening um, which is always pretty much the case with mules and hybrids it's a chance that they are fertile it's never guaranteed um, and that's that goes for the same with the the um red siskin mule um, you know, red siskin cross canary uh, and so forth. So they are the closest. Now I'll put up on screen here um, a few other things which are closely related to the canary in the genus. And if you want to research this, uh, just all you have to do is uh, type into Google uh, Serinus genus and you can have a look there at other species that are very closely related. Uh, and obviously make your mind up there. So if you are interested in breeding or having the chance to breed fertile hybrids, uh, then these are probably the best bet for that. So also a familiar term for a lot of us native bird keepers is the term half chat. Now that is referring to the, I, I think it's safe to say crossbreed between a northern uh, bird and a, a British bird. So that would be, for example, breeding a native bullfinch with a Siberian bullfinch or a native goldfinch with a Siberian goldfinch. Uh, and it's, it's, it's something that's generally frowned upon and recommended not to do is breed these half chats the reason being is that what it's doing is polluting the blood so if you breed a, a british goldfinch with a siberian goldfinch you're decreasing the size in the siberians that has been worked on for years to increase the size in them uh, and then obviously if you go breeding a, a siberian goldfinch into a side um, into a british goldfinch line you're, you're actually increasing the side and polluting the blood which is being kept so pure for a, a you know a very long time uh, so i'd recommend not doing it please don't read half chats um but something I thought I'd mention in this is that a half chat wouldn't be classed as a new species because they're fertile. And um, that the, the, the um, I think it would be best to say that a Siberian bullfinch and a native bullfinch are the same species, they're just different breeds almost. Imagine it, uh, put it in the, 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 the idea of dogs. So a poodle is the same species as a chihuahua, which is the same species as a rottweiler, okay, but. Um, you, you put the two together and you get crossbreeds, which is basically, if you then put that into bird terms, that's that's a half chat rather than a crossbreed. Um, and they are the same species, so that's just something to take into account. If you do breed a Siberian goldfinch with a Siberian, um, Siberian goldfinch with a British goldfinch and you get a fertile hybrid, then you will because they are the same species, but rather a separate um, a breed, yeah, a breed of that certain bird. 
So my apologies for obviously I'm being in my room right now uh, and editing this video at the time rather than being in the bird shed to present this. Um, but something that's just come to my mind is I've been on Facebook and actually seen uh, a discussion about hybrids uh, being fertile, which li links quite well into me making this video, uh, which will obviously be released on Saturday. Uh, now, I thought it would just be important that I need to make a point of uh, how they are actually fertile and why hybrids in the first place are infertile and one of the main reasons being that the chromosomes are different in the parent species uh, and one of the best examples that I could give of this is actually just the standard mule and that isn't in birds that is a horse crossed with a donkey uh, a horse has 64 chromosomes a donkey has 62 therefore a mule has 63 um, the mule inherits these 63 chromosomes um, and chromosomes need to be in pairs in order to divide and then um you know successfully reproduce because it's it, it's just how they work um therefore with mules and hybrids they a lot of them have odd numbers of chromosomes so for example a goldfinch and don't quote me on this because this is a guess a goldfinch has 24 chromosomes a canary has 22 you put them together and you get a 23 chromosomed mule now you can't breed off that bird because the chromosomes cannot divide in um you know success successfully to then actually um reproduce and that bird reproduce now you might then question well how can we get these fertile hybrids then uh, and the answer is simple they inherit an extra chromosome so in humans obviously you would you would know that as a down syndrome um, a person with down syndrome uh, and rather so rather than the standard 46 which you get in a um a normal healthy human being uh, in a down syndrome human being or, or any animal you get 47 so you get an extra one on top um and that is why they can't reproduce uh, so then it's the it's the same goes um with that is that they've got an extra chromosome these birds so then actually they're in pairs so they have an even number which then allows them to um divide and actually reproduce then successfully so i thought that's just something i need to put in this video uh for a few of, you know people who understand science a little bit more in this because i do understand it's a very tricky subject area i could go into a lot more detail but it's just not worth it for this video i could do a video on it um it's just something that a lot of people will probably get lost with um because it is very difficult uh but yeah so we'll, I'll, we'll get to the next bit of the video so before i end this video i think it's important that i i put forward to you about how we come about with some new mutations as well as coming about new species and, and how actually you can play an active role in that so really if you have mules or you have hybrids a lot of people will throw them all in one flight all cock birds and leave them over the breeding season uh, and that's absolutely fine nothing wrong with that other than the birds aren't having the opportunity to breed which actually shows that they aren't you know, if they are fertile you could potentially be missing it because the birds don't have the opportunity to breed now this is something that i'll be doing and something that i recommend that you do if you have um the space and the birds for it is actually pair your birds up so your mules and your hybrids back up and just see what happens because the worst thing is that you end up with a pair of feeders uh, and ideally they don't take up much room now uh, especially a lot of canary you know mules um or obviously the the, the um canary bullfinch hybrid is the mule is classed as a hybrid as well um is that they'll breed and nest in relatively small cages because of the canary in them you know i've got goldfinch mules where a goldfinch would want to breed in a large cage whereas um the, the canary in a small cage and the mule side of it because of the canary in it will nest in a small cage well i would recommend that you pair them up now that could either be um goldfinch mule to goldfinch mule or you could do maybe goldfinch mule to canary or you could do something different and you could do uh crossbill bullfinch to uh, a bullfinch hen or crossbill bullfinch to a canary uh, and, and all i'm saying with that is that if they are fertile it gives you the opportunity to or gives them the opportunity to prove it to you and actually breed and then from that um you could actually have this you, you know f2 hybrid or, or whatever it would be because it depends on what you breed um 
and it gives opportunity obviously to have a bit of a different bird for something for the shows but also um potentially new mutations so you might be able to get yeah you know, again we're going through long shots here but uh, if you did a green finch bullfinch with a pied green finch um and a pied bullfinch and then you could breed the pied into the bullfinches and get maybe more of a yellow a yellow pied bullfinch for example or i think a, a big one would be uh, a pied crossbill hybrid because then if you did if you did a, a pied green finch and a normal crossbill and you got the the pied youngsters from that bred them back to crossbills and one of them just happened to be fertile and then you st you might start to develop a line of pied crossbills for example or you could do it with a gate hybrids or or something like that and actually start to transfer the mutations over uh, but also opportunity for new mutations and new colors which is how i think moving forward and how we can develop our mutations as well as um maybe even new species like we said about the bengalese for example and how that can really move forward as i mean if we could try and do something maybe for a, a red siskin so we we get a red siskin into um a line of european green finches for example and then we could end up with red green finches um just an idea just an example or, or imagine you get a red siskin into the blood of a crossbill so then there's no more need to color feed your crossbills red uh, you know carafil red because naturally they come red and then all you have to do is enhance it with carafil red for example rather than not color feeding a crossbill and it going green to yellow um so there's so many different options there so i would encourage you that if you have mules or hybrids uh, and you have spare cages pair them up um it, it, with something else and just see what happens you've got nothing to lose from it the birds would be in a flight anyway if not or or whatever you do with your mules and hybrids throughout the breeding season and see what happens and if it comes to it use them as feeders they're always useful so there you are please uh, i would encourage you to do that i will be doing that this year with my siskin mules which i showed you earlier as well as the red pole mule um they're the only ones I've got at the moment. Sadly, I lost a linnet mule a few days ago. Um, he was about three or four years old, but he actually broke his neck. He, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I, I found him, and I think he just got a bit spooked, and he hit the it hit with the side of a flight and just he didn't recover from it. But either way, I don't want to dwell on that because things happen like that. Um, but it's something that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be trying more mules and hybrids. Um, you know, as we, as we are next year, as you know, that I'm breeding the, the greenfinch crossbill hybrid. I'm doing siskin red pole down there. I'm doing goldfinch mule and I'm doing uh, greenfinch mule. All those different things. So we can actually maybe try pairing them back and see if we get a fertile one at some point. Now that brings me to the end of this week's video. So I really hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new. And I really hope I've encouraged you to try different new things out uh, and really just experiment and enjoy the hobby. So uh, please, if you aren't already, make sure you subscribe as you don't want to miss any of my future content. I have weekly videos every Saturday morning coming out uh, as well as a few bonus videos in the midweek. We also have some really exciting news uh, which will be coming next Wednesday. We'll be launching the first natives and norwich uh, zoom room call so that'll be really good that will be with owen welsh so please make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss that please hit the like and that shows me that you've enjoyed this video make sure you share this video with someone else who will be interested in this as well as interested in my channel uh, and please make sure you've got the notification bell on so you don't miss any of my future content so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video